got some new parts today. These are all my parts right here. Brakes and I have to replace the whole window system inside of this lovely van on the driver's side. So eventually I'll be doing a video on that. I've never done one, so it'll always be interesting. And I'll probably just do it raw so you'll see my mistakes and everything else. Today though, I am going to be jacking up this van. So I figured I'd show you the correct way of doing it without destroying your van. So that'll be my first video. Eventually I'll get in here and I'll leave a, hopefully if I have the time, I'll show you how to take this out and clean it. Cause it's having an issue with that right now. And this is the lovely window system we have holding up right now. And that piece you just seen a few minutes ago is that right there in the door. So I'll have to replace that. It'll be a separate video. I'll do a few separate videos so everybody got to watch one to figure out everything. But today, I'm going to show you how to jack this entire van up on jack stands. I will be using some heavier duty jack stands over there for this, but you can easily put a van up on regular jack stands to make sure the weight corresponds with your jack stands. So we'll be getting to that in a few Alright, so I am at the front tire right here. It's the front of the car, it's the rear back there. It's the jack stand I'm using. You can use a jack stand like this. Just to make sure, you know, it can carry the weight. That has plenty. I'd probably want to use a two ton on the front, at least a three ton. This one here is, you know, I don't remember what this one is actually rated for. I think it's like 10 tons or something. Eight tons, I don't know. But I use it because oh, that's only a five ton. But five tons is way more than enough to lift this up. I usually use this for my SUVs, but since I have them, I use them. So where are you gonna place these bad boys? In some cars, it's a little more difficult, but this van ain't too bad. You really want to try to get it underneath this rail right here. Just be careful because on the other side. You may have lines. Maybe this one right here is sticking down. Maybe it's a gas line or something under there. You don't want to kill that. That would not be good. So I would be placing mine. There's the tire. Right about in here. I don't know if you can get a look at that. That's like your frame rail. It's a little more thicker than a car would be, so I don't find any problem sticking that right there. I'll show you how to do that. I'm gonna get to it. Now for the rear, I can drag my cardboard with me. It's a little bit chilly today. And laying on the ground is not that great. So for the rear, oop, I think I kinda need that light. <laughs> I'm back on. Yeah. For the rear tire, there's a tire. There's your axle. Oops. I'm gonna put it right about here. So when you jack it up, you're gonna be out there a little bit. Don't jack it up in the middle. I'm just gonna know you could bend that thing. Probably not, but I'm not gonna take that chance. But my jack is gonna sit as close as I can to the wheel. Right there. It's a pretty solid axle. So I don't see no problem with that. Same with the other side. And the same with the other side to the front. I'll do the same exact thing. <clears throat> so now that we figure that out, what you got to figure out is um, when you take off these wheels, if you're just doing it with a regular you know, wrench, you, you got to make sure you lift the car up just a little bit and then untighten these bolts, these lug nuts, bolts, <laughs> lug nuts. Just enough to get them loose. Don't take the tire off yet until you get the jacks to underneath the car. But I'll be using a an electric one. This one's actually pretty strong. I got this from um it's a tool store. Hopper Freights. Wasn't that bad actually. Takes these lug nuts off no problem. Even the harder ones on my truck. I was actually surprised. I'll be using that, but I will show you one of what I mean by 
taken off manual, so we'll probably do the front one for you. And I do recommend doing the front first and then the rear. Front's a lot heavier. You don't want to be lifting up the rear than trying to lift up the front. Just don't make sense. All right, I'll be back once I get some tools ready and show you. All right, here we go again. <clears throat> Let's using a three-quarter socket on this. Used to be a 19, but lug nuts seem to be a little messed up. Also, make sure you um, put something to block the rear wheel so that they don't roll around and run you over. Would not be a good thing. So basically, you're gonna take these things off. Actually, what? It's not true at all. First thing you gotta do is actually jack your car up just a little bit. Make sure you're not in the way where you want to put this thing, which is gonna be maybe about under there. And then on that same rail, make sure you're not hitting any lines. Which right there I would have been. Nice 
screwdriver. Do not have a regular hammer in the handy. So this will work. That bad boy is jammed in there. Don't come out, not to put it in the vise. You don't lose, doesn't matter as long as you got the make sure you got the jack under there. I want to get them loose enough because if you're not loose enough, you're not going to get this tire off once you lift it up. So once you get it loose. Job, so I'm showing you guys the brakes on that. Right. Oh yeah. That ain't no good. That thing is toasted. Look at that thing. That's not good. That's gotta be replaced. Fun times ahead, fun times. Alright, so we did that side manually, so I'm on to the other side. The rest of them all, I'll be using my impact wrench. If you don't know what an impact wrench is, this is an impact wrench. It's an electric one. I find it actually works better than the air powered ones. Still using a three quarter. Just uh, make sure your 
know which was reverse and which is forward. You don't want to go forward. Oh, I almost forgot. You're going to use the impact wrench. Make sure you're smart and go get some damn safety glasses. You know, I'm using all the impact stuff here. Except for extension. Still good break and go all over the damn place. Oh, get ahead of myself here. For the impact one though, you're going to want to raise the car. Make sure you're where you want to be. Let me just check this really quick. There are a lot of brake lines and all sorts of stuff on this side. I don't want to be on that. Good the impact and actually jack up the entire car and then take the wheel off. But for this purpose, I'm just going to jack up the front here. I'm going to take one off so you can see. But if I was doing this all normal way, I would just jack the entire thing up. Either when you're doing it, pulse it, you end up heating this thing up and burning out the brushes in it. Not to say I never did that, but I do learn the hard way sometimes. Actually, kind of 
the stuff, so I just show you what I was talking about before. They are stuck. We see they're all marked. A little kick on the bottom. And voila. I'll be moving on to the rest of them. Alright, I'm not sure if my camera was just messing up or what, but I decided to do this a little bit differently. I normally don't lift in the middle, but there is a way to do it without filling your car. You can see that I don't have a huge space here. dead in the center, which I'm actually um, about there. Will not be perfect, but that piece of wood though is going to even out the pressure all the way across it. So you're not like lifting just in the middle, because you can see when I'm coming up on it, not exactly flat. Might be because of the way the front's sitting, but I'm going to go with this way. Sort of lifting off. This one's lifting off a little bit more so. I'm actually going to lower it down. I'm going to shift it just a little bit over this way so it makes the other one come up faster. Yeah, it's a little more even. A little trial and error. Lift it up some. Yeah, that'll be close enough. Still rolling, so he stopped on me a minute ago. Alright, now, just pay attention to everything going on. You remember to get those things on jack stands up up front. Make sure everything's going. That's why I normally keep the wheels on first. <laughs> just in case something bad does go on, you can be sure it's just going to come down the wheels. And now, if something goes bad, oh, I'm shot up. A lot more damage to fix after that. So jack it up the way you need it. And you may be good enough. Be extremely careful when getting under here. If you feel something moving, make sure you're moving quick. He's under there. Quickly as possible. And do kind of lift them up so you know it's kind of even when it's going to come down, hopefully. So you get as close as possible to the end. So it's the poor as well. Get your butt up out of there. And slowly let it down. Like this one here you twist. And there it goes. Now I can just leave that there for a moment. Give it a shake and see if something falls. Have a close up in case you want to see. That's what I do with the wood. That's where I place them. And that's how we do it. Looking at the brake lines, they don't look too good. That might be another video. Yeah, boy. So, all I'm going to do is pop off these wheels. Like I did with the front. I'm going to be using my Beast Impact wrench there. So I'm going to get in here and make sure this thing is off the crap out of this car. Make sure it ain't going to fall down. They don't have a lot of room here. And a lot of crap in my garage. One day I'll clean it. Probably not. But now, you know, get to the wheels. Remember, you can't do this if you ain't got an impact wrench. You gotta take it off on the ground. You can see, actually, the whole car is <laughs> way higher in the back. So, 
I may or I may not lift up the front. Probably not. It's stable, it's good. I'm only doing brakes, I don't really need to do a whole bunch more. I mean, I could lift this up more if I really wanted to. But you can see it's sitting under there really nice. Maybe you can. Well, kind of dark. But that'll give me enough access for everything. Just remember to put down the rear first. <laughs> so I probably can't even get a tire back under there. Let's see. <laughs> nope. The tire is way too low. Look at that. So obviously, I would have to do it all for the rear wheels down and then the front. Just reverse of what you did, you know? Not too hard. Give a little quick walk around and see what shows looks like. Plenty of room, plenty of room. Give it a bump. Nothing's falling. Good to go. I do wish I did let it go up more. I may raise it up, I may not. Eh, then now I fail. Alright, next time we go around, I'll we'll probably be doing the brakes or maybe even that. Till then. Thank you.